We're here at KubeCon 2018 in Seattle, Washington, and we're visiting with the Hedvig booth. Can you tell us a little bit about the company and what you're showing here at KubeCon? Sure. Uh, my name is Gaurav. I am a product manager and founding engineer at Hedvig. Hedvig is a software-defined storage company, and we come more from the virtualization uh, ecosystem. We have been providing storage for VMware, Hyper-V, KVM kind of workloads, hypervisor-based workloads for a long time. We had a good uh, backup target as well. We have a lot of good integrations with NetBackups and Veeams, kind of backup applications. And now what we have seen in the last couple of years with the advent of containers, Dockers, Kubernetes, we have been providing storage, the similar capabilities that existed in the virtualization infrastructure. The same thing for the container workloads, which means running your big data applications, your databases, large data sets inside containers, that's what we want to enable, persistent storage for containers. So we bring all the software-defined storage capabilities for the container ecosystem as well. So what we, our value proposition, one is consolidation of a lot of protocols like iSCSI, NFS, S3, so we want to make sure traditionally whatever workloads you were running, whatever protocols you were using, you keep using the same workflow. So that's one aspect of what Hedwig does. The second thing that we do is the multi-site capability. So you can install a stretch cluster using Hedwig across different data centers, from on-prem to public cloud locations, even multiple cloud locations like AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud, and provide this stretch cluster where you can run your applications on-prem as well as in the cloud. Because that's what we have seen lately in our customer environments. Uh, what people have been asked, the enterprises have been asking us that traditionally they were running everything on prem, of course, in a very traditional way. Now, with the digital transformation, with the advent of containers, Kubernetes, they want to move slowly towards the cloud, install these uh, containerized workloads, and that's where we come in to make this whole transition as simple and seamless as possible. And where do you fit into the Kubernetes uh, ecosystem and are there specific problems that with Kubernetes that your product solves? Right, so uh, the problem, the real problem that we really solve in the uh, Kubernetes or container ecosystem in general is providing persist persistent storage for containers, which is enterprise class. What I mean by that is, if you have been running your workloads inside virtual machines over the last few decades, you have been used to, let's say, taking snapshots, clones, thinly provisioned volumes, scaling your volumes dynamically, increasing the size, uh, highly available storage, which means your virtual machines go down from, uh, or move from one place to another, your storage is instantly available. So those kind of capabilities were missing in the container ecosystem or the storage providers. Uh, but now, since uh, bigger workloads or the larger data sets are moving to the containerized infrastructure, that's where we come in uh, to fulfill the needs of the similar capabilities that existed in the VM workload to the container workload, which is providing the snapshots, clones, dynamic provisioning of the volumes, and when your containers fail over across different Kubernetes nodes, for example, the storage is instantly available, it's persisted at the back end, and all the capabilities like enterprise capabilities like deduplication, compression, all the storage reduction capabilities that existed in your traditional workloads, we, get, we give you the exact same thing for containers so that your workloads, your uh, whatever your expectations are uh, over the last few decades, you don't have to change anything there uh, when you move towards container. It just becomes simple, the same uh, methodology that you've been using, same uh, expectations you had from your data sets, uh, when you're writing the data or reading the data, everything from a storage point of view remains exactly the same or even better when it comes to containers. And where do you think the industry is going over the next 12 to 18 months? Right, so uh, as far as containers are concerned or even Kubernetes uh, is concerned, what we really believe is most of the effort will go into enabling hybrid cloud and multi-cloud workloads because uh, most of the enterprises, since they were running their workloads on premise, but now they are slowly moving towards cloud, there will be a long period of time, at least few years down the line, you will have workloads on-prem as well as in the cloud. So make this whole data movement, as well as the network uh, infrastructure, the compute, so compute, network, and storage, all three uh, different uh, modules have to come in and work seamlessly together, and that's where Kubernetes have to spend more effort than how to install let's say Kubernetes cluster across different data centers, across different clouds, and make them work together in as simple way as possible. And that's where we believe the Kubernetes will spend most of their efforts, and the container ecosystem in general will evolve towards providing that transition uh, in the next few years down the line. Great. Um, 
Would it be possible for us to take a look at the product, maybe see a demo? Sure, yeah, let's go with that. So what are you going to show us? So in this demo, we'll see a multi-site deployment of one of Hedwig's cluster, and we'll go through how to consume, in a very simple way, volumes, uh, storage, different storage operations using Hedwig. So let's move over to that. So this is one of the Hedwig uh, installations, where Hedwig is installed across three different sites. SNC1 is one of the sites, SNC2 is the second one, and SNC3 is the third one. And each one of them has three different storage nodes. For example, Intel 1, Intel 2, and Intel 3 are three different storage nodes in data center 1. So in total, this cluster has nine nodes. So that's one of the components of Hedwig cluster. The second component is Hedwig storage proxy. As you can see, HSP is, of course, the short name for that. So one storage proxy in first data center, another storage proxy in the second data center, and two more in the third data center which means you can have any number of these storage proxies which essentially sits near your application or where your computer is and talking to your applications northbound and southbound is talking to our storage cluster. And as you can see, it's a completely decentralized distributed storage cluster. And in fact, I can click on any one of these storage nodes and go inside and look at all the different physical drives attached to them. I can actually look at their capacity, like 1.8 terabyte and how much is consumed. So all the granular details for each and every storage server you can get using this UI. And all of this capability, all of this information is in fact available using REST APIs. So you can incorporate all of this into any of your analytical tools, any of your monitoring tools as well. And on the left-hand side, the, these two big circles, the first one is the storage consumption, so 8% is storage consumed at this point. And this gives you the DDO savings, the second circle. In this case, 82.97% means that that's the amount of savings you got across all the volumes that are deduplication enabled in this entire cluster. So this is the first tab of this uh, storage uh, uh, cluster. In the second tab, we have virtual disk management. As you can see, this list, all the volumes, and again, all virtual volumes, completely thinly provisioned volumes that are consumed or created using this Hedwig cluster. And the simplest step to create a new volume is just click Add Disk, and then give it a name, and then give it, specify any size. And as, as I said, it is a thinly provisioned, so you can actually specify, let's say, hundreds of terabytes, so you want a one petabyte for a size, and uh, we will let you do that with the assumption that you will scale the cluster when it's running out of capacity. And uh, in terms of disk type, as mentioned earlier, we have different protocol support like uh, block, NFS, uh, and object storage for uh, iSCSI, NFS, and S3 kind of protocols. And you can select that using disk type from block and NFS. And for S3, we let our uh, customers use standard uh, CyberDuck or S3 server kind of uh, uh, interfaces. And all the capabilities that uh, we mentioned earlier, like compression, deduplication, encryption, all of that can be configured when you create the volume. So it's all policy driven, it's all workflow uh, driven, depending on what your workloads are. And you can uh, pick and choose what really uh, satisfy your needs for a given workload. So we don't uh, enforce any of these capabilities like deduplication or compression at the entire cluster level, but we let you choose when you create the volume. So that's a simple way of consuming Hedwig volume, and once you've done that, it will just show up in the list. And the second step, of course, is just to mount this volume and start consuming for any given application. And the same thing, what it would look like for Kubernetes ecosystem is, uh, when you create a, a Kubernetes cluster and you want to consume Hedwig inside Kubernetes, you will create a new storage class uh, used with, using Hedwig as the backend, and a new uh, PVC that you can create uh, for consuming Hedwig volume of any given size. So when you actually create a container inside Kubernetes, it will dynamically provision a volume using Hedwig cluster so that you don't have to take all these steps using our even our REST API or web interface. All of that can be dynamically done or will be dynamically done using our dynamic provisioner inside Kubernetes ecosystem. And it will be managed by Hedwig cluster so that when your cluster container fails or let's say move from one Kubernetes node to another, it will be immediately available because our cluster is stretch cluster across completely external storage, and we are making sure of all the availability of the data, availability of the volumes. So as far as you are concerned as an end user, you care, take care of the containers, that you run your application inside containers, but don't worry about the storage, and we'll make it highly available using our cluster. Great, well, thanks for taking the time to speak with VM Blog, and uh, where can they go if they want to find out more information? 
Sure, um, you can just go to our website, uh, www.hedwig.io, and we have a lot of information around the container ecosystem, even for Kubernetes, we have our solution guide. You can actually look at the demo as well, and uh, all the details of how you can set up Hedwig inside uh, your ecosystem. And of course, talk to us if you have any questions. Great.